Hi, welcome to planetmosh.com and I've been privileged to be joined by Corey from Trivium. Uh, welcome to Bloodstock, first of oh, all. Thank Corey. you. It's um, fun to be here. Yeah. Um, headline set tonight, yep. uh, which sounds very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find um, this sort of size festival compared to a lot of the, I mean, you do the huge festivals, obviously. Uh, we've done uh, a couple, you know, obviously there's like the big ones, but we've, um, over the last couple of summers, you know, we've hit some newer ones that are in like, you know, some other, some other areas that are a little bit on the, kind of like the up and coming festivals that are newer. Um, you know, it was crazy. We did one that was in uh, Holland. Um, the name escapes me, but it was like, we did it one year and it was like one stage. It was like about maybe like 10, 15,000 people. And it was like, you know, us, Anthrax, Machine Head, Slayer. It was like a smaller, brand new festival, and then like two years later, we did festivals again. It was like forty, fifty thousand people, and I was like, "What the hell happened?" You know, it's crazy. <laughs> um, and there's always so many festivals, and uh, it's crazy because there's a bunch of festivals uh, like Bloodstock. We're doing Summer Breeze and a couple yeah. other ones that um, we've never really done too many festivals at this time of the year, the summer. So we've uh, luckily, since you know, we were still working on the record, you know, we. You know, we're not doing you know the June stuff probably till next year, so it's fun. Uh, you know, we haven't done a show since like I don't know, like November 24th last year. So it's kind of crazy that you know first show back, I haven't played a show in like eight nine months. The first show is headlining you know a festival, but uh, it's great because uh, you know, we played the UK so many times. Oh, yeah. um, we've done download like five times, and it's nice that after all these years, there's like something new. Yeah. And, I know uh, you've always had that. Um, you touched on download. That you've always had that sort of affinity with uh, with the download crowd, especially, wasn't it? Because that's where I guess that would be your first, perhaps, major festival appearance, perhaps from earlier days. Yeah, that was the first big festival we ever played, and it did so much. And Andy Copping, who puts it on, he also books our our normal tours. So, and we've always done festivals at that time of the year, and that's like the only festival in the UK at that time of the year so we've always it's kind of like that was all we knew and we did like you know main stage a couple times we've headlined you know the second stage a couple times so so we've done kind of we've kind of made a rounds all over you know download that uh kind of timed out that uh you know we've known about this show since the last time we played download because after we finished that set was when we started talking to bloodstock when we confirmed the the show so uh been waiting, waiting a while for this one, and we've never been here, and uh, even as like a spectator or whatever. So it's cool, like you know, being here. It's like this festival is really cool. Yeah. It's got a really kind of like uh, it's like a family friendly, atmosphere, yeah, so. family atmosphere. It's very uh, everything's set up. We've known, you know, Vicky and Alan who kind of run the show. We've known them for you know for years. So. Uh, you know, it's from familiar faces that it's like coming in. It just feels like we've been here before. So, yeah. Yeah. I touched on um, new stuff there. The, the new singles out was it last week? I think, or it's just come out now? Or that, yeah, it came out like a week. Yeah. Or yeah, like about a week before this show. Yeah. But was it right in? Was, did the track originate from the sort of Shogun era? Was that? And if so, what made you sort of revisit that period? And um. Well, the song. You know, we we were touring for the Crusade record. We had uh, kind of at the end of that album cycle, like one of the last tours we did was uh, opening for Heaven and Hell in Japan. And one of the, I think it was the last show of the tour we were playing in, I think it was Nagoya. And it was like a smaller show. Um, so the venue we were playing had like, you know, normal and then the balcony. But since it was a smaller show, the balcony was closed. And at the time, Matt knew about, you know, knew the Dio stuff, but he'd never really heard like the, uh, the Dio era Sabbath stuff. And I kept, Forever was always talking about like, you know, like, dude, Heaven and Hell is one of my favorite Sabbath records. And you know, I even said that when we were on OzFest, when Ozzy was with Sabbath, and they asked me, what's your favorite Sabbath record? And I was like, Heaven and Hell. And everyone was like looking at me like I was like the biggest asshole on the planet. I'm like, dude, it's a great record. Don't get me wrong. But uh, Matt wasn't familiar with it. So we we're like, dude, you got to come watch the set. So we watched from the balcony. It was like the whole band and our manager. And it just was like, they're like, fucking godfathers of heavy metal with Tony Iommi and all those guys, Dio, Geezer and they sounded so fucking powerful and amazing that after that show like 
like within a week, like the idea for Silence in the Snow was written. And at the time of, you know, doing Shogun, we had a lot of material in that song, you know, we always thought it had like something cool to it. But for that record, it just didn't like kind of fit with what that record ended up being. And if you compare the two now, you can definitely see like, you know, it doesn't really kind of mesh with, with the songs from that record. But uh, it always kind of stuck around and was always kind of like a song that was always in the back of everyone's head. Especially our manager who would always hound us about that song. Like, dude, that song's so killer. You guys should use it. And it just never, over the course of a couple records, it just didn't seem to really kind of kind of fit. And it just kind of, you know, once we went back and listened to it again, like the, over the last like year and a half, kind of like finally felt like it was like the right time where we're at musically and what we where we wanted to go we just kind of kind of felt right that it, the song would actually uh, reach its potential now than yeah. if we tried to do it before where I don't think we would have been able to kind of execute it exactly the way that we felt the song should and going back and re, you know revisiting that song again and, and fixing it up and changing parts or whatever kind of became like the, the starting point foundation of what the record became that was like the first song and we kind of grew off that song so it became uh that was after all these years it actually it became instead of just being like another track for an album it became the kind of the, the seed starting yeah. point for the album yeah yeah, yeah. so it had a it's had a long journey but i'm like hey that song's you know like a fine wine it took a little while but you know, we we got it you know yeah. and we it, it didn't uh it's it's finally got its you know time in the sun. So, and you gone with um, a new producer on this one as well. Yep. Yeah. What, um, is, it, is he somebody you worked with before, or was it totally no, different? We, and, and why? We, um, we pretty much just use a different guy every record. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's depends on what what we're looking to do for the record. Kind of find the guy that kind of fits the the vibe. Or uh, so it was kind of like. It just kind of like presented itself. Like it was just kind of like you kind of know, like you know, like the last record, you know, Dave Draymond. You know, wasn't like we had this whole list of people and we're like talking to everybody to see. Just kind of was like, we should work together. And just like that sounds cool. Let's do that. And then you know, we wanted to make the record in Orlando and um, Elvis Basquette. He's lives in Orlando. We had known him from uh, just running into each other at shows, and uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, common friends. That uh, you know, I've hung out with him like briefly, like nothing like too crazy, but we knew each other, and uh, it just kind of came up like talking to our, our record label guy about you know he brought up his name, and we were like, yeah, we were kind of thinking the same thing. So it just kind of like the universe kind of like tells us in a way, kind of like what seems to be the right guy, and you know we uh, had a little hangout, you know, chatted played him some songs and it just we're like let's do this and uh it was great like you really uh you know, what, what we were doing with uh, the song he was his whole musical background is rooted in the exact same stuff we were being inspired by to uh to make the record so he got the vibe he got like he was in the same mindset of what creatively what we were doing that he kind of like you know wasn't you know, he knew what we were thinking when we were where we're going with an idea, so it worked out really well. Yeah. And um, well, just to switch back to the live front, I mean, you sort of touched. Maybe we can see you in the UK next year, perhaps. And yeah. Nothing definite yet, I suppose. But uh, yeah, nothing's definite. But we'll be. Uh, I'm sure. Um, we'll be doing all like the, the festivals again yeah. next summer. Um, so there's, you know, there's potential. You know, maybe a, a download a own, maybe. or. Uh, you know, who knows, you know, if we do anything in Europe, like a headlining thing, it might not be until, like, like later from, on in the year, perhaps. Yeah, uh, maybe next winter or yeah. something like that. But uh, definitely there will be some festivals. Uh, nothing's really come up, but probably over the next couple months they'll be kind of planning out all that stuff. So we'll be definitely probably next summer we'll be over here somewhere. <laughs> Well, it just reminds me, I know you're an extremely busy man today with press before tonight's set, but thank you so much for talking to us, and oh, um, I'm sure tonight's set will be an absolute triumph. 
Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We uh, today, well, since I, I said earlier it was our first show in a long time, and it's like, you know, the, pretty much everything new for this record. It's like uh, the big debut. So everyone at Bloodstock gets to see the, uh, well, hear the hear the new song live for the first, be the first people to hear it live, and also uh, our whole our new stage production is tonight's the first time anyone's seen it. We never posted a picture. No one knows what what's going on. So. We're really excited that you know, you know, headlining. You know, we get to bring like you know, give everyone a, a, a fun, full experience. Full experience. <laughs> you know, give them the, the bang for the buck. So, Brilliant. hopefully, everyone uh, enjoys the uh, the spectacle. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Well, thanks very much indeed, Corey. Awesome. Thank thanks a lot, man.